Hey everybody, welcome back to OrthoNugs. In this video, we're going to discuss the osteokinematics and arthrokinematics of the mid and lower cervical spine. So we're gonna be focused in on C2 through C7. So first of all, the osteokinematic motions or the gross movements that occur at the head and neck are going to be flexion or forward bending, extension, backward bending. We have side bending or lateral flexion, and we also have rotation. So as we move into arthrokinematic motions, remember, and we've discussed this in several of the other arthrokinematic, osteokinematic videos that we've uh, presented here on orthonugs, uh, remember there are three primary types of glides that occur at these joints that we've discussed in our videos. Uh, one is going to be a translational or a slide glide, and in the cervical spine, the mid and lower cervical spine, that is the primary or the exclusive type of glide that occurs between the vertebral segments. But also remember we have a spin glide or a pivot glide is what we call it in our world here, uh, but same difference um, like uh, radial head spinning on the uh, capitulum, right? So when the axis of rotation cuts through both articular surfaces uh, at an articulating joint, then that's called a pivot glide or some resources will call it a spin. And then we have our classic um, roll glide, right? So that's your convex concave rolls. So with the cervical spine, we're gonna talk primarily about translational glides. First things first, you need to appreciate the orientation of the facet joints in the cervical spine. That will help with naming these glides that are occurring. So the orientation of the facet joints is going to be about 45 degrees. Now there's going to be a bit of a transitional zone in the lower uh, cervical spine, but in general we can say it's at this orientation. So when we describe this type of translational glide, it's not superior, it's not anterior, it's going to be more in this oblique direction. So we're going to want to describe that as an anterior superior or a posterior inferior. So for flexion or during flexion, for instance, see if I can, we're going to have our two facet joints at this 45 degree orientation. When you flex the head forward, you're going to have an anterior and superior translational glide. When you extend the neck, it's going to be a posterior inferior glide. Now, when we go into side bending, here are our facets. Let's say we're side bending to the left. You're going to have on the ipsilateral side, you're going to have a, an inferior posterior translational glide, and on the contralateral side will be an anterior and superior glide. Opposite would go for a right side bend. Ipsilateral would be inferior and posterior, contralateral would be superior and anterior. Same goes for rotation. The motions in the cervical spine are coupled in the same direction or coupled together. The coefficient of coupling is strong in the cervical spine. So in other words, those glides that we described for side bending are going to be exactly the same for rotation. So if we rotate to the right, for instance, uh, just like side bending to the right, on the contralateral side or the left side in this case, you're going to have a superior anterior glide and on the right or the ipsilateral side, you'll have an inferior and posterior translational glide. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.